All righty. Ernest Wong, my buddy. I'm going to add to your video, your most recent videos. So for many of you, this will be the wrong way, but the right way. Okay, we talked about lead leg deliveries. And we're, and we're not talking high kicks, we're talking street type, or, or maybe even in the cage or ring, but low level uh, initiation kicks. One of the first ones we, you can learn is what they call a switch kick. You see this a lot in Muay Thai and stuff, where you basically are switching boom and coming off the switch. Now, the switch can draw him to a, to a reaction, and then you can determine where you want to go, so you can go switch, bang, or you can go to the groin or whatever. But the switch kick is a great way to generate extra power, okay? Because we all know that a lot of the times that step up lead leg kick doesn't get a lot of that power like you do when you go rear leg. Well, this kind of gets in in between. When you throw the switch, you've created uh, torque in your hip, and now you can really come through with that switch kick. Some guys like it, some guys don't. Telegraphs, it can be a difficult thing. You can actually switch kick back and then take advantage of the reaching kick. So there's lots of different ways uh, to throw that kick. That's just one of them. Uh, a kick that I talked about in your uh, thread there, Ernest, was the drag lead leg kick. Point fighters do this a lot. And, and instead of doing the step up, which we'll talk about in a second, this is a kick where you just let this lead leg drag. You literally let it drag, follow. So you can kick to the leg, or you can kick to the groin, and that rear foot's just basically dragging along because they're connected. Uh, you can go to, to the bottom. You can even go to the head with this if you want. But all you're really doing is pushing with that rear foot, pulling with the lead foot, and letting that rear foot drag. You don't want to drive up because if you drive up, you telegraph, plus you lose your foundation. If he's a good, real good counter fighter and he sees that kick coming, he might go bam and decide to hit you. So you want to have that foot down. Just let it drag. You can hear it drag. And that's called the drag kick. Uh, one of them that you covered in there, Ernest, was the combination kick and move at the same time. Bink. And you could bink. Use that for there. Bink. Here. Bink. To the shin. Bink. To the leg. Don't mock my hands, okay? I'm doing these kicks just to demonstrate. Typically, yes, you want your hands right here. You never want to give away that you're going to kick. If you drop your hands, it's a bad thing. Shame on Kirby. Bad video, bad video. So, hands here. Bink. Kick comes. Now, the last kick is a shuffle kick. I love the shuffle. We're going to talk about shuffles here more in a second. But shuffles can vary depending on how much gap you want to close. You can shuffle right up to or through, or you can just do a light shuffle. So if you're here and you're out of range, and he's out of range, then a good way to close that gap is that rear foot shuffle. Bam! From here, bam! Groin, bam! Knee, bam! Body, saw that coming, huh? So the shuffle kick works really well. And like I said, you can use shuffles for lots of different things. Uh, those are some good deliveries for lead leg kicking attacks. Uh, let's talk about shuffles for a second. I'm getting over my cold. Uh, on that shuffle step, I love things like, he's got his hands out here. This shuffle step works really well for this rolling back this thing. Bam! Where you come in here, your closing gap, instead of doing a lunge step, would put you in a stop. When you shuffle step, you can keep going. You can run right through them. You can do a shuffle step and then literally just blast right through them. Where on a lunge, it's kind of hard to do that because you've thrown your mass to one spot and then stop. So on the shuffle step, bang, great for this. Notice I don't give this up. Boom, here, boom, here. Lots of things, but I don't give that up. Uh, so if he's got his leg the other way, okay, so now he's taking away some of my target areas. So some of the things I like to do off, say, the shuffle step here is I might, boom, shuffle step into a side kick, or I might go, boom, shuffle step into a lead leg, or I might shuffle, take that sweep. But one of my favorites, and this works great in the street, is I love to put my hand right in his face. And you know, you don't need to close this. 
This doesn't matter. You're just basically putting your hand there to preoccupy him. More, normally what this will do is it will cause him to rise up and bring his legs closer together. But if it doesn't, that's okay. I use this against nationally rated point fighters, and I can't tell you how many guys that are great fighters that this worked on. It's called the two-legged scissor sweep. So from here, when I come in on my shuffle, whoop, the hand just opens and grabs, and I take both legs. I believe I talked, talked into a thread the other while, a little while back, about how I could get guys this high in the air. I'm trying to get my hands on some videos of some old point fights where I did this all the time. Sometimes I'd fight guys that were so quick, they could hit me before I could hit them. So I was like, all right, you got that point. And then I, the next thing I'd do is I'd step in and bam! And I would get them just so high and throw them so hard on the ground and bam! And tag them. And all of a sudden the gap would change. They didn't like that. So that works really well. But as a street technique, if you're fighting multiple attackers, you got a guy here and a guy here. This is a great technique to take this guy out of the equation and deal with this guy one-on-one. -on -one. You don't want to turn your back to this guy. So this works really well for here. You might step in and boom, take him here, and down he goes. And now you've got your one-on-one. -on -one. You know, or you could even do the, the Bruce Lee. Anyway, something to think about. Have a good day.